Hey, welcome back to Making Sales Social Live. And uh, we're here today to talk about the five things that we want from our clients. Welcome to Making Sales Social Live, as we share LinkedIn and social selling training, strategies, and tips that will have an immediate impact on your business. Join Bill McCormick, Bryn Tillman, and me, Bob Woods, every week. Making Sales Social Live. This is the recorded version of our weekly Making Sales Social Live show. Only five. Five. Only five. Just five. Only five. So we're so not asking not for that much. Big not, a, not a lot. And not all at once. That's, so that's a really good yeah. point. Yeah. That that's a good point. Overwhelming. It can be. So let's start with the first one, which is so obvious and really has very little to do with LinkedIn, which is more business. Gosh. What more business can we get that's from our easy. clients? That so makes sense. You, you know, uh, we right. have not because we ask not. And, right. and so, I, and I think it's finding a way to do it that's not like pitchy or not being ag right. too aggressive or not being a pest, right? Well, yep. and it has to solve the, the problem, right? So, right? so it can support. So for us, for a very long time, we were just trainers. We didn't do coaching. And there was a, a challenge where our, a lot of our clients are like, we want more of you. We want more of you. And you don't keep training the same thing over and over again. So we added group coaching, right? So that was where we could get more business from the same client in a way that's serving them. Exactly. And and the nice thing about that is when you're trying to get more business, your clients can actually tell you what they want from you mm -hmm. so that you can provide that to other clients too. We've done that. Almost all yeah. of our products and services are born out of the needs and the requests mm -hmm. of our clients. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect. Absolutely. Number two, internal introduction. So I can't tell you how many pilots we start with, right? <laughs> they come in and they do, we're doing 20 reps, but there's 400. Yep. So, so now we do, we, we start with that. Now we use LinkedIn for this. You know, a lot of times they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, just our department. Maybe they don't even realize it's a pilot, right? We're, I'm just in charge of my department. So what do we do on LinkedIn? Bill, talk, what, what do you do on LinkedIn? What we want to do is we want to socially surround the account. Mm -hmm. You, you want to look at who else is in similar positions. And, and you know, for us, we're, we're looking at people who are in, who are VPs of sales, business development, marketing, but for you, it's, it's who are the ancillary. So if you deal with marketing on a regular basis, Maybe you also want to actually everyone wants to look at human resources. All right. There's this is my secret. All right. Because you want to be connected to the people in HR because they always know who's leaving and who's coming. You don't want to be a one trick pony with an account and just have that one person. That's my only person. They're my champion. They're my go to. I don't, I'm not connected with anyone else in the company because when they leave, then you, you start over just like a new vendor. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you're connecting with you know, your champion, but then also who are their peers who's, who are not only in the same department, but are in other mm -hmm. departments, who are their bosses, mm -hmm. right? Their superiors, who are their, who reports directly to them because they may get promoted into the, into that position. But then what other departments to, can you look at that you can provide your services for because you don't just want to go vertical in an organization. We want to go horizontal in an mm -hmm. organization also. Love that. Love that. So buy your map, right? Go in, figure out who all these people are. And the internal introduction is going to that person that hired you initially and saying, here are the 12 other people ultimately I'd like to get in front of in your organization. Would you be open to making some introductions and telling them how wonderful our products and services are for you in your department. So that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Next one is external introductions. Bob, you talk a little bit about external introductions. Yeah. So that comes into essentially what we talk about a lot, which is just, um, you know, taking inventory of who that person knows outside of the company and then just either asking for uh, referrals just uh, for introductions rather like, like what we just talked about or just ask 
for permission to name drop. And then at that point, you have uh, good reasons to go to these other people who the person within the company has said, yeah, sure, please go ahead and, and contact them. Or yes, I'll provide an introduction for you and then connect with them on LinkedIn and, you know, hopefully build a relationship at, at that point. Yeah. So let's bring that together because that's a brilliant way to look at this, right? So mm-hmm. what do we want to do? We want to go to our client on LinkedIn Mm -hmm. mine their connections to Mm -hmm. identify exactly who are the other people like them. In our case, it would be sales leaders, chief revenue officers, chief marketing officers, or VP of sales, right? So we identify our existing client. Who do they know, as Bob said, outside of that organization? Mm -hmm. And then I go, you know, George, we really loved working with you. And we're so glad that we've been able to do you, you know, help your team do X, Y, and Z. Uh, I'm curious, you're connected to quite a few people on LinkedIn that I'm looking to get in front of. Can I run these names by you and get your insights, right? And this is what Bob's talking about. This is so important. So now we have this one-on-one conversation and maybe we had 18 names and it brings it down to six people that our clients said, these would be great and they know me well. And now you're going to determine, are they the kind of client that would be happy to make an introduction for you? Or do you want to do what Bob was saying, permission to name drop? So I said, George, thanks for these insights. I really appreciate it. When I reach out to each of them, can I mention that you're my happy client and you thought we should talk? And so, you know, half of those will convert into conversations. Yeah. And it's that simple too, especially with the, especially with the name dropping. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, look at your calendar. What, what meetings do you have between now and, and, and then the next two weeks? We're in, we're in the fourth quarter here. I'm sure you're reaching out to your clients and you're, and you're talking, you're having conversations before you go into that meeting or before you get on zoom or get on the phone with that person, take some time, look through their connections so much better than saying, so Brynn, if you've been happy with our services, if you can think of anyone that could use our, our services, please don't hesitate to recommend us. And Bryn says, sure, Bill, I'll do that. And hangs up the phone and has a bajillion yeah. other things that she's dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know, rather end the call with, hey, Bryn, if you have like 10 more minutes, I was looking through your LinkedIn profile and I found these five people that I'm looking to get in front of. Do you mind if I just go over those names with you real quickly? Love, 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 love. Number four that we want from our, number four that we want from our clients are vendor introductions. This is such a big deal because when we are prospecting, it's like fishing with a pole, right? We've got one pole, one line, one hook, one worm, and we're out there catching one fish. When we have relationships with other vendors that are not competitors that are selling into our clients. It's like fishing with a net. That's why they call it networking. Okay. That was really bad. Just came to my head. I couldn't help it. It's like Tourette's just networking. Okay. So it's, but it, you know, it's now we're connecting with lots of different people that sell to the people that we want to get in front of. And if we can build deep enough relationships with them, uh, we can both ask for you know uh, referrals. We can give referrals and build relationships with people. We're being fed opportunities on a consistent basis. Who wants to add to that? Yeah, that's really important because I mean, I think that a lot of uh, a lot of salespeople out there just don't think about it. I mean, you know, because they are going with that fishing pole analogy, but I think that, you know, the moment that they hear of this, it's like, oh my God, that's such a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? And then as they start implementing it, they will not only um, be able to give and receive referrals, but they'll develop relationships with these people as well. And who knows, they they may find out things about the industry that they may not know about. And there's there are all kinds of, uh, of benefits to this besides just straight sales. But obviously, um, straight sales and giving and receiving referrals is, is probably the main thing that you're looking for. So one of the reasons that I love this, and I mean, we could go out on LinkedIn and find lots of potential referral partners. Mm-hmm. But when we get vendors that our clients refer to us, Number one, they're already vetted. So we are comfortable introducing them into our network. Number two, that we're comfortable, they're more comfortable introducing us to their network. But number three, which should have been number one, they take our call. Right. 
right? Yeah. Because we have a shared client. They, they're not going to risk not having a conversation with us when they came in from a, an active client because that could get back to that, to yep. the client. So mm -hmm. they take your call. You build rapport much faster. You're comfortable in making introductions and they're comfortable making them for you. What's number five? Number five is recommendations and case studies. So this is huge. And, and I'll just stop for a moment and, and say something here. This is why all of these reasons, but this one especially, is why you need to be connected on LinkedIn to all of your customers. And please don't say to me, but Bill, if I'm connected to my customers, my competition can see that and they may steal them away from me. If you're worried about a connection on LinkedIn, stealing a client away from you, we have bigger issues to talk about. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'll leave that there, drop that mic and say, let's move on. By being connected to your clients, as you can see, there are a number of ways that, that it can benefit you recommendations and case studies are huge. So what I do is when a client emails me or we're talking, hey, wow, that training you did was, was phenomenal. Here are the results we got. It was so wonderful. I immediately say, hey, wow, thanks, Bryn, for that. Hey, would you do me a favor? Could you write me a recommendation on LinkedIn for that? And the reason that I want to do that is because recommendations on your LinkedIn profile are social proof that you do what you say you do. Mm -hmm. We talk all the time about creating a value centric profile. And in that value centric profile from top to bottom, you're telling people the value you bring, how you help people, you're providing that education. The recommendation is the bragging part, but you don't have to do it. You let other people do it who are, mm -hmm. who are over the moon about you. And so, Bryn, tell everyone how we use this, how it's really benefited us. Yeah. So, you know, we're when we're selling in, in the corporate world, often we'll have the, the, the buyer responsible for vetting the vendor, us, right? So often they'll say, you know, when we come in referred or recommended, this rarely happens. But if they found us through our content or they don't have a warm connection, but they liked what they saw, they're like, we need to make sure that they are as good as I think they are. So they'll say, can you give us a couple of references, people to talk to? In my past life, and I've dealt with this all the way back to my first job at Dun & Bradstreet, believe it or not, they want people at even then selling D&B services. They wanted to talk with people like, did their collections work? I promise you this was like amazingly complex when it came to the sales cycle because even if I had people to introduce them to, it elongated the sales cycle. I made the introduction. It could be days, if not weeks, before they have the conversations. And the momentum and the excitement of the buy dies out. And so you lose a lot of opportunities just because you lose that momentum. Now, what we say is, you know, Bill, go ahead and absolutely, I'm happy to do that. Go ahead and look through my recommendations on LinkedIn and make a list of a couple people that you'd like to talk to. And I can arrange that. And when they go and they see the hundred plus recommendations from clients and clients like them, and they can click directly through and see where they are and who they are. I haven't had anyone say, yeah, I want to talk to them. That ends up to be enough. Huge, it's huge social proof. So make sure you're connected to your clients. And if you have a problem with that, email me. I'd love to, to, to have a conversation <laughs> with you. I came out of an industry where people wouldn't do it. That was the big, the big complaint I got all the time. And it was so ludicrous. But connect with your clients because through that, it's going to open up avenues of five things that you can get from them, that you can obtain from them, which is more business from them. Mm -hmm internal introductions within the company, external introductions, vendor introductions, and the last one, recommendations and case studies. Anybody have anything else to add? I think you did a great job of rounding that Excellent. out. Wonderful. Great summary. So so thanks everybody for watching another week of making sales social or learning listening. and listening, listening, and watching or listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Don't miss an episode. Visit socialsaleslink.com slash podcast. Leave a review down below. Tell us what you think, what you learned, and what you want to hear from us next. Register for free resources at linkedinlibrary.com. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, 
Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play. Visit our website, socialsaleslink.com, for more information.